Geonim Hebrew, Gwanim Hebrew, Eonim, also transliterated Geonim singular gown, were the presidents of the two great Babylonian Talmudic academies of Sura and Pumbedita in the Abbasid Caliphate, and were the generally accepted spiritual leaders of the Jewish community worldwide in the early medieval era. In contrast to the Resh Galuta Exilarch, who wielded secular authority over the Jews in Islamic lands, Geonim is the plural of Gon gown, gown, which means pride or splendor. In Biblical Hebrew and since the 19th century, genius, as in modern Hebrew. As a title of a Babylonian college president it meant something like, His Excellency. The Geonim played a prominent and decisive role in the transmission and teaching of Torah and Jewish law. They taught Talmud and decided on issues on which no ruling had been rendered during the period of the Talmud. The Geonim were also spiritual leaders of the Jewish community of their time. Era The period of the Geonim began in 589 CE Hebrew date, 4349, after the period of the Savoraim, and ended in 1038 Hebrew date, 4798. The first gown of Sura, according to Sharira Gaon, was Mar Rab Mar, who assumed office in 609. The last gown of Surah was Samuel ben Hophni, who died in 1034 CE. The last gown of Pumbadita was Hezekiah Gown, who was tortured to death by fanatics of the Bayad dynasty in 1040, hence, the activity of the Geonim covers a period of nearly 450 years. There were two major Geonic academies, one in Surah and the other in Pumbadita. The Sura Academy was originally dominant, but its authority waned towards the end of the Geonic period and the Pumbadita Geonate gained ascendancy Lewis Ginsburg in Geonica. <laughs> <laughs> Role in Jewish life The Geonim officiated, in the last place, as directors of the academies, continuing as such the educational activity of the Amoraim and Saboraim. For while the Amoraim, through their interpretation of the Mishnah, gave rise to the Talmud, and while the Saboraim definitively edited it, the Geonim's task was to interpret it, for them it became the subject of study and instruction, and they gave religio-legal decisions in agreement with its teachings. During the Geonic period the Babylonian schools were the chief centers of Jewish learning, the Geonim, the heads of these schools, were recognized as the highest authorities in Jewish law. Despite the difficulties which hampered the irregular communications of the period, Jews who lived even in most distant countries sent their inquiries concerning religion and law to these officials in Babylonia. In the latter centuries of the Geonic period, from the middle of the 10th to the middle of the 11th, their supremacy lessened, as the study of the Talmud received care in other lands. The inhabitants of these regions gradually began to submit their questions to the heads of the schools in their own countries. Eventually they virtually ceased sending their questions to Babylonian Geonim. The title, Gaon The title of Gaon came to be applied to the heads of the two Babylonian academies of Sura and Pumbadita, though it did not displace the original title of Rosh Yeshiva Gion Yaakov Hebrew, head of the academy, pride of Jacob. The Aramaic term used was Resh Medivta. The title gown properly designated the office of head of the academy. The title became popular in use around the end of the 6th century. As the academies of Sura and Pumbadita were invested with judicial authority, the gown officiated as supreme judge. The organization of the Babylonian academies recalled the ancient Sanhedrin. In many responsa of the Geonim, members of the schools are mentioned who belong to the Great Sanhedrin and others who belonged to the small Sanhedrin. In front of the presiding gown and facing him were seated seventy members of the academy in seven rows of ten persons each, each person in the seat assigned to him, and the whole forming, with the gown, the so-called great Sanhedrin. Gown Amram calls them in a responsum, responsa der geonum, ed. Lick, number 65, the ordained scholars who take the place of the great Sanhedrin, a regular ordination, semica is of course not implied here, that did not exist in Babylonia, only a solemn nomination taking place. Gaon Zima refers in a responsum to the ancient scholars of the first row, who take the place of the great Sanhedrin, the seven masters, or alufim, and the habarim, 
The three most prominent among the other members of the college, sat in the first of the seven rows. Nine Sanhedris were subordinated to each of the seven Alufim, who probably supervised the instruction given during the entire year by their subordinates. The members of the academy who were not ordained sat behind the seven rows of Sanhedris. <laughs> Works of the Geonim Responsa C. History of Responsa, Geonimerly in the Geonic era, the majority of the questions asked them were sent from Babylonia and the neighboring lands. Jewish communities in these regions had religious leaders who were somewhat acquainted with the Talmud, and who could on occasion visit the Jewish academies in Babylon. A literature of questions and answers developed, known as the Responsa literature. The questions were usually limited to one or more specific cases, while the responsum to such a query gave a ruling, a concise reason for it, together with supporting citations from the Talmud, and often a refutation of any possible objection. More discursive were the responsa of the later Geonim after the first half of the 9th century, when questions began to be sent from more distant regions, where the inhabitants were less familiar with the Talmud, and were less able to visit the Babylonian academies, than the only seats of Talmudic learning. The later Geonim did not restrict themselves to the Mishnah and Talmud, but used the decisions and responsa of their predecessors, whose sayings and traditions were generally regarded as authoritative. These responsa of the later Geonim were often essays on Talmudic themes, and since a single letter often answered many questions, it frequently became book length in size. Two important examples of such books are the Siddur of Amram Gaon, addressed to the Jews of Spain in response to a question about the laws of prayer, and the Epistle of Sharira Gaon, which sets out the history of the Mishnah and the Talmud in response to a question from Tunisia. Some of the responsa that have survived are in their original form, while others are extant only as quotations in later works. Many have been found in the Cairo Geniza. Examples of responsa collections are Halakot Pesukot Min Ha Geonim, Brief Rulings of the Geonim, Constantinople 1516. Shilat U Teshuvo Mi Ha Geonim, Constantinople 1575. Share Zedek, Gates of Justice, edited by Nisim ben Hayyim, Salonika 1792, containing 533 responsa arranged according to subject and an index by the editor. Teshuvo Ha Geonim, ed. Masafia, Lick 1864. Teshuvo ha Geonim, Share Teshuva with commentary Iyye ha Yam by Israel Moses Hazan, Livorno 1869, linked here. Share Teshuva ha Shalom, ed. Leiter, New York 1946. Teshuvo Geon Mizrach Yuma Arav, ed. Muller, Berlin 1888. Lewin, B. M., Otzer ha Geonim, Thesaurus of the Ghanic Responsa and Commentaries Following the Order of the Talmudic Tractates 13 vols, Haifa 1928 Asif, Sima, Teshuvo ha Geonim, Jerusalem 1927 2nd volume 1942 Other works Individual Geonim often composed treatises and commentaries. Three handbooks on Jewish law are Hulisho Pesukot of Yehudai Gaon not to be confused with the responsa collection of the same name, this was the basis of many other abridgments. Shieltet of Achai Gaon Hulisho Gedolot, by Simeon Kayara, the most notable author among the Geonim was Sadia Gaon, who wrote biblical commentaries and many other works. He is best known for the philosophical work Amunath ve Dioth. Yarshe Kala Two months of the year were denoted as Yarshe Kala, or months of the bride, referring to the Talmud, the Hebrew months of Adar and Elul. During this time, foreign students assembled in the academy for common study. During the first three weeks of the Yarshe Kala, the scholars seated in the first row reported on the Talmud treatise assigned for study during the preceding months. In the fourth week, the other scholars and also some of the pupils were called upon. Discussions followed, and difficult passages were laid before the gown, who also took a prominent part in the debates, and freely reproved any member of the college who was not up to the standard of scholarship. 
At the end of the Yarshe Kala the Gaon designated the Talmudic treatise which the members of the assembly were obliged to study in the months intervening until the next gathering took place. The students who were not given seats were exempt from this task, being free to choose a subject for study according to their needs. During the Yarshe Kala, the Gaon laid before the assembly a number of the questions that had been sent in during the year from all parts of the diaspora. The requisite answers were discussed, and were finally recorded by the secretary of the academy according to the directions of the gown. At the end of the Yarshe Kala the questions, together with the answers, were read to the assembly, and the answers were signed by the gown. A large number of the geonic responsa originated in this way, but many of them were written by the respective geonim without consulting the Kala assemblies convened in the spring. Individual geonim A Chai Gaon died c. 761 Amram Gaon died 875 Dodai ben Naaman, Gaon of the Talmudic Academy at Pumbadita 761 to 764 High Gaon 939 1038 Sadia Gaon 882 or 892 to 942 Sharira Gaon 906 Chananel Ben Chushiel Rabbi Nu Chananel 990-1053 and Nisim Gaon 990-1062 of Kairawan, though not holders of the office of Gaon, are often ranked among the Geonim. Others, perhaps more logically, consider them as constituting the first generation of Roshonim. Maimonides 1135-1204 sometimes uses the term Geonim in an extended sense to mean leading authorities regardless of what country they lived in. See also Gaon Talmudic Academies in Babylonia Responsa, History of Responsa, Geonim Rabbinic Literature Eras of History Important in Jewish Law Pumbadita Academy Sura Academy